there are things that Vermont can do about this. There's not a lot we can do about the trends that uh, Ed and Tom showed on your, the screen. But you have a problem here and now, not 20 years, not 30 years, uh, and you have to deal with it as uh, is expected by your constituents who sent you up here uh, to deal with these questions. So I would like to just take a few minutes uh, to talk about what I would I suggest is a practical step forward. Um, I have an unusual thing, Mr. Chairman, that I just published a column in which I uh, heap praise upon five Democrats. Conceptualizing government. Uh, I don't need to tell you the fiscal numbers 150 million shortfall that you're facing the general fund this year and 470 over four years. But uh, as a noted member of this body said, uh, sometimes crisis brings opportunity. And let's approach this in that sense. Um, right after he was elected, President Obama said while he was appointing his budget and management director. In these challenging times when we're facing both rising deficits and a sinking economy, budget reform is not an option. It's an imperative. We cannot sustain a system that bleeds billions of taxpayer dollars on programs that have outlived their usefulness or exist solely because of the power of politicians, lobbyists, or interest groups. We simply cannot afford it. This isn't about big government or small government. It's about building a smarter government that focuses on what works. I think that's a very uh, concise and, and eloquent statement whether his administration was pursuing it in that spirit remains to be seen. But I think that should be a, sort of a lone star for people of both, all three parties, four, I count the libertarians, that, that um, we can do something about it and the people who sent you here expect you to do something about it. Uh, the other night on television, I saw the leaders of both parties and the governor uh, pledging uh, a commitment to of working their way through this problem in a bipartisan, multi-partisan way uh, to uh, come out with some kind of result that will keep, a lot, keep Vermont alive as a, as a going institution. Uh, what I want to make with you today are three points. I'll, I'll give you this handout to, when I leave. Uh, first, uh, we need to agree on what are, what are the core functions of a government. What do we expect government to do that really no one else could do? I just made a quick uh, short list. Maintain public order. Uh, protect Vermonters' right to use, exchange, and bequeath private property. Constitutional requirement. Ma ma maintain an independent judiciary to protect rights, settle disputes, and try lawbreakers. Uh, remove convicted lawbreakers from society until they pay their debts. Maintain a highway system. Assure every child a publicly financed K-12 education, which doesn't necessarily mean publicly provided, but publicly financed. The policy that was adopted in 1864 amidst the Civil War and is one that is, I think, largely beyond challenge. Provide or coordinate assistance in times of emergency. I'm thinking ice storms, floods, uh, that kind of mainly natural disaster, or one that worried me a great deal when I was serving in the Vermont State Guard. Uh, some kind of catastrophic attack on a population center out of the state that would send a horde of refugees fleeing the scene to the safer confines of Vermont. Uh, this is a, a, a politically very difficult issue, uh, but that's the kind of thing we expect state government to deal with one way or the other. Uh, assure honest weights and measures. That's been over 100 years, uh, a task of government. Make humanitarian provision for the indigent. I just picked those 10 items uh, out of my memory bank pretty much, and I'm sure each of you will have a bunch of recommendations of your own. Uh, my model here is what Governor Gary Locke of Washington did in 2003. They were going through the same kind of uh, a sink, and he set up a task force that uh, said, all right, let's ask ourselves, what are the core functions, and what are the nice functions, things that are nice to have, it's sort of like the uh, waterfall when the budget was overflowing, where there were things that were nice to have, and there were one-time things, and we didn't commit ourselves to keep putting money in those things year after year, but if we uh, had a surplus at the end of the year, 
Uh, we started going down the list of uh, making grants to various uh, organizations. Well, uh, what uh, Gary Locke did uh, won some surprising uh, support from conservatives as well as liberals, although they didn't entirely agree on what those core functions were. Uh, redistribute income from the poor rich to the poor? That's a much more politically charged proposition. Uh, well, what I think we're looking for here uh, are the results and the things that government really uh, has no alternative uh, and, and no competitive alternative must do those things. Um, once you've done that, that, that took a while, as you might imagine. Uh, it's sort of a local town meeting debate kind of an issue, and we should have done it a long time ago. But once you've got at least some tentative agreement on those, step two is the performance review. I wrote a column in 1995, which I brought with me today, uh, called Governing Smarter and Cheaper, where I looked at how states had done performance reviews. Uh, Michigan, uh, under Governor John Engler, a Republican, had at that time just very successfully completed a review called PERM, uh, Privatize, Eliminate, uh, uh, Reform, Modify which looked at every function of Michigan State government and said, do we need to be doing this? Would it be better if somebody else did it and we paid for it? Would it be better off if we just chucked the whole thing and let the private sector and our civil society go? Or can we change what we're doing in a way that will be more efficient uh, and more productive for the taxpayers? Uh, the performance review has been done in a number of states. Uh, California under Governor Schwarzenegger in his first term of office uh, did a very thorough effort. Uh, Arkansas, the Murphy Commission, uh, was one of the celebrated examples. If you're looking for one on a short time frame, you look no further than New Zealand, 1987, which is a story too long to tell at this uh, meeting, but suffice it to say, the country was on the rocks through bad management. Uh, the Labor Party, which was the Liberal Party of the year, uh, New Zealand, uh, came to power and took a very hard, realistic look at where their country was headed and in about three months had made a series of completely unprecedented uh, decisions to roll back things that had been around for a long time because we're going to lose the whole works. And that was a persuasive argument at that time. Subsequently, New Zealand became the world's most efficient producer of dairy products. Uh, and it's interesting to uh, compare our dairy industry in this dairy state with New Zealand dairy. New Zealand dairy typically has cows 8,000 pounds a year production. We're still trying to get 25,000 out so we can get a blue ribbon at the fair. Why, do, why are they not doing this? They got the grass and they got the sun and the water, and we have the climate. Uh, they're doing it because they found a more efficient way to make milk. It doesn't involve uh, stoking uh, huge Holsteins with uh, all kinds of uh, additives uh, to try and set some kind of new production record. I won't go any further into that, except to say that here was an example where the crisis was staring them right in the face. <coughs> it's not that we were sliding down the slope and had to put on the brakes. Uh, we're we're you know, hanging on the edge. And they made it work. Uh, and it, it, it's interesting that this was done by what was considered to be the Liberal Party of um, uh, New Zealand. I might point out that the 2004 uh, Democratic Party platform was all for precisely this kind of a uh, uh, performance review. Maybe some of you were involved in that. Uh, why it didn't happen, I don't know. But it uh, has some uh, democratic heritage. Uh, I mentioned in my uh, statement, I'll give you uh, John Sharp, the Texas uh, controller, a Democrat, who was the pioneer in the late 1980s of the statewide performance review. Texas saved untold billions of dollars over the years when the Republicans took over, they kept doing everything John Sharp had been doing and taking all the credit that he had rightfully taken uh, for his efforts. So my point is, there are examples